Alright, I know there's a lot of people who have been waiting for this one, and every release just seems to be getting better and better. I'm speaking about Linux Mint 15 Olivia, and we're going to look at that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Alright, let's begin. I'm looking at the Mate Edition, and I understand they've made a number of improvements to this. This is sporting the new Linux kernel 3.8, and this also brings a number of new features. So first, let's have a look at the new features, and then I'll give you a quick rundown of all the applications that this comes with. Okay, first, you have some login options now. It now supports HTML5. So, uh, for your login screen, you can use GTK theming. You can use the GDM theming, and there are a number of themes in this listing here that you can choose from, or you can pick the elegant HTML5 themes, and you will see in the listing here that there are a few really slick looking login screens that you can pick out. Next, in our roundup, there is a new driver manager that comes to Linux Mint, which will allow you to easily install and configure your drivers. Next, Linux Mint introduces the software sources manager, and here you can manage your official resources, your PPAs, additional repositories, authentication keys, and of course, general maintenance. Very elegant by design. Okay, now Linux Mint 15 comes with the same standard complement of applications that I have seen in prior releases, but let me give you a quick rundown of what you get with this. Okay, in uh, all applications uh, under accessories, you get a file roller or uh, archive manager, as uh, it's called, a calculator, a character map, a tool for managing drives and media. Uh, you can search for files, take a screenshot. You get a text editor, Tomboy Notes, and of course, you can write images to USB, which can be very handy, especially if you're distro hopping. In graphics, you get Events Document Viewer, which will open most common documents today. You get the GIMP for, for uh, editing your images, GThumb, an image viewer, LibreOffice Draw, and Simple Scanner. In Internet, you have a number of tools that are readily available as well. You get Desktop Sharing. Uh, the Firefox web browser, Pigeon for all of your instant messaging needs, Thunderbird for email, Transmission for BitTorrent, and XChat IRC. And this is already pre-configured so that if you're running into any issues with Linux Mint, you just click on XChat IRC and it will take you directly to the chat rooms where you can speak with people live. And there are people there 24-7. And as I mentioned, you do get the LibreOffice suite as well as a dictionary. In sound and video, you get Banshee. You also get Brazero for making wonderful coffee custards. I mean for burning CDs and DVDs. You get Totem for viewing movies and VLC Media Player, which will pretty much cut up any video you throw at it. Um, it's great for playing uh, DVDs and most media formats that you would download online. In System Tools, you get Kaja. A disk usage analyzer, the GW package installer, a log file viewer, you can manage new logins from here, some power statistics, you get a task manager, and a terminal. You also have a number of administration tools for this system. And in preferences, you have everything you need for customizing this and making it your own. I really like what Linux Mint 15 brings to the table. Elegant in design and perfect for everyday use. The only thing I don't like is the fact that the support on this isn't very long. If you're looking for something that's going to have support for a longer period of time, I would suggest using Linux Mint 13. But this is definitely a step in the right direction. Excellent job, Linux Mint team!